Awesome. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sweet, 70 people in here. So Preparing let's open up the chat. Stream. Sweet. Okay, one moment in the chat. Hey guys, Jessica from LA, LA. So if you open them, you can also see the chat room here. We can say hello to a couple people. Yeah, Simone is in Italy. Laura, oh, hello. Oh, Laura. In Italy. What time is it in Italy? It's got to be like middle of the night or morning. Mexico City, Whitefish, Montana. Brian, hello. Wow, 3 a.m. Thank you for tuning in. I think you might. You might be the most dedicated attendee of this webinar, Mr. Mr. Italy, Beverly Hills, San Diego, Texas. Sweet people from all over. Incredible, incredible. Seoul. Some Jen is here from Seoul, South Korea. That is wild. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, we'll give it like one more minute or something. Yeah. Now, how was the weather today in San Francisco? Today was actually really nice. Um, you know, like the past couple of weeks, you know, everyone knows the fires have been happening. So a lot of the smoke has been, you know, kind of coming into this area. I live in the inner sunset in San Francisco. So I'm a bit more west, closer to the coast. Um, and typically the air is a little bit better there just because we get at that ocean breeze. But it's been really nice. Like today, I think it was like 70 degrees. It's still actually sunny outside. I can see the sun right now. So I went outside for a little bit of a walk, which I love to do. That's kind of become like the normal everyday kind of me getting out, getting some fresh air, trying to stay sane in this, you know, all this, all these crazy things that are happening. So yeah, it's, it's been good. It's, it's been a good day so far. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, hello, Dominic from India. Wow. That is unbelievable. Siang from Malaysia. Oh my gosh. Hello, Greg in Wisconsin. Um, incredible. So I think we can kind of, we can kind of get the ball rolling. So I just want to go through a couple housekeeping items then uh, before we get started. Um, so just off the bat, we want to say thank you so much to everyone that has gone out and purchased Dan Tom's newest workshop, yes. uh, the Storyteller's Guide to Taking better iPhone photos. We're, we're very grateful for that. And we're very excited to have you, Dan, as our newest instructor here with, with Wildest. Um, just wanna, yeah, just wanna let everyone know that the, the chat window is a place that you can all chat amongst one another as Dan and I discuss and talk. And as we watch Dan edit community submitted photos. I also wanna uh, let you know that there is a and A box. So in the bottom, if you go into the Q&A, and you can type a question. There might be a little bit of time here and there where we can ask Dan any questions that you'd like to have answered. And if you see a question that you like, you can upvote the question. It'll kind of sift its way to the surface and there'll be a greater chance that we'll ask Dan that question. Um, I mean, feel free to ask me anything about, you know, this is actually the first time that I'm doing something like this, like kind of being in front of the camera, really engaging with uh, people who are interested in photography and uh, maybe people who follow me. So I'm excited to finally do this uh, with Wildest um, alongside launching this workshop. So if you guys have any questions about my story, about San Francisco, about, you know, what's kind of the hottest food here, whatever, whatever, just, uh, just shoot. And then we, we can try to get to that. Fantastic, fantastic. I guess I didn't really introduce myself. I'm Joel Fuller. I am the, the community lead here at Wildest. Um, and yeah, we're just, I'm so happy to be here representing Wildest with our newest, our, our newest instructor, Dan. And um, yeah, I guess um, we can get started. You know, uh, so the newest workshop, your workshop, uh, the Storyteller's Guide to Telling, uh, to Taking Better iPhone Photos is uh, the early access for this workshop ends in two days time. So right now it's on sale for $75 and on Wednesday it goes to its full price of $99. So everyone here has two more days uh, to jump in on that uh, early access price. And Dan, can you tell us a bit uh, about your newest workshop? Yeah, so um, the workshop I think kind of, it's kind of like coming full circle for me. Um, you know, when I first got into photography, I mainly shot 
on my iPhone. And I had actually purchased a DSLR prior to the iPhone, but then when I got the iPhone, I actually just completely stopped using the SLR. And I think those two to three years that I was shooting iPhone, I had just got Instagram. And I think just kind of following and finding people that really inspired me as a photographer and just really kind of growing. Like, I think I became more of a student uh, during those years when I shot iPhone and um, that was really transformative and really pivotal, I think, in terms of my journey as a photographer, when I learned to really focus on, on editing and um, yeah, just, just kind of like really diving into it. So uh, what you can expect from this workshop is kind of like what I really learned during those years um, and, and so on. And I'm, I'm kind of packaging that into this workshop. So um, from tips on how to shoot, um, even like technical things on how to use a camera, changing exposure uh, to editing a little bit of my process, the apps that I use to edit. And um, I think a really cool aspect of this workshop is that we're kind of getting, we, we touch on a lot of just storytelling and why and how you can find inspiration to tell your own stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your favorite part uh, of the process creating the new workshop? Um, I mean, it was it was actually challenging for me, um, you know, kind of like what I alluded to earlier. I love being behind the camera. And so even even doing this and kind of showing I like I like the anonymity um, that I've kind of had so far. Um, but I think that was challenging for me, just being in front of the camera, like talking like this. Um, so I think really breaking down my process and, and what I'm actually doing when I shoot, what I look for in a photo. Um, those are all things that. I had to really cognitively think about because I typically don't think about it. I just like go out and shoot and I don't know, I don't know how to really translate that and communicate that and, and maybe verbalize that. So I think that was challenging for me. Um, I think my favorite part is just everything that we kind of covered in the workshop. And I think just, I think being in the field and kind of when the cameras were following me and, and how I shoot and, and, and editing, I think those are my favorite parts for sure. Um, what, what do you hope students that take the workshop, um, what, what are they going to take away um, from taking your workshop? Um, I think for sure, I think hopefully you guys can learn at least one thing. If it's a shooting tip, if it's an editing tip, if it's, um, or even, I just hope that in your journey as a, photog as a photographer or, or someone who's interested in photography, that this in some way can inspire you to go out and shoot or to go out and, and, and take photos and maybe relook at maybe what your story is. I think that's, that's what we all kind of bring to the table in this whole kind of creative world and you know how everyone is everywhere like we have people from all over the world like tuning in i think that's amazing like there, there there's your story is so important and i think that that's what i really want to get across and hopefully this workshop can provide you guys at least some of the tools to help do that with your phone and you and how you don't need a fancy camera to take nice photos and um, editing is also like another part of that so um that's kind of what I would love for people to expect and to take away from it. Sweet, excellent. Um, so tonight we have the pleasure of watching Dan edit straight from his iPhone. It's uh, so he's going to screen share here, maybe um, momentarily, if you, if you want. You could explain first, though, what apps do you use on your iPhone to edit and get in the creative process. Yeah. Um, so during those early years when I was on my iPhone and I discovered, I discovered two apps that really I still use to this day and they're a huge part of my, um, my process. Uh, the first one is Snapseed, which I think is free now. I think when I got it, it was before Google bought them out. So it was like, I think I paid like six bucks for it. And then the other one is Visco. Uh, Visco is kind of a, they have like filters kind of built into the app, but I use that for kind of creating like a mood or like a, a direction that I want to take the photo. Um, but I'm going to walk you guys through that in just a second. Um, let me see if I can get this screen share thing to work now. Sounds great. Okay, Joe, I think you need to enable me to screen share. Oh, there you go. In one moment. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Um, 
But thank you guys for, for those of you who submitted photos uh, for me to kind of select from. Uh, thank you guys for sending those in. There were a lot of great photos. Um, I picked a handful just to kind of uh, edit and, and go through. So we're gonna do that now. Here we go. All right, is that working? Here we go. Sweet, okay. Um, so these are the photos. Um, I'm gonna start with this one. So, okay, these are the apps that I use. Uh, Snapseed, which is the upper left, and then Visco. So my process is usually, oh, that's an old photo. Let's open one of these new ones. Okay, so I'm gonna open, I even created a folder for this webinar. That's how on top of it I am, just kidding. All right, um, so I'm gonna start with this landscape. Um, Joel, do you know? Yes, I can, I'll, I will link um, the Instagram handle who took this photo in the chat discussion, okay. but I can tell you right now that this photo is by Will GPC, Will GPC, Sweet. and I will link them in the chat. Yeah, okay, cool. Will, thank you for setting this in. Um, this looks like, I'm gonna guess it's probably Montana. I feel like these mountains, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, Will, if you're here. Um, so one of the first things that I like to do is, you know, when I sift through photos and say I land on a photo, I open it up in Snapseed and my first step in editing usually is just to like, figure out what I want to keep and what I want to kind of focus on in the photo. So what I do is I'll, I'll go to the tools. As you can see, Snapseed has a, there's a ton of tools, but I typically just use a, a, like a couple of them and I'll show you. So there's a, on the upper left, you see the tune image and the tune image has kind of all your basic um, adjustments like brightness or exposure. So if you do, you can change the brightness and bring the brightness down accordingly. Uh, contrast, see how it really kind of takes out those midtones and just accentuates the shadows and, and then saturations, this color, um, highlights and shadows. Shadows, you can really kind of, if, if there's a dark part, like in this photo, like the, the foreground or kind of the bottom half is really, really dark. Um, you can, there might be some information there that you can draw out if you bring up the shadows like that. I mean, this is kind of extreme, but you get, you get the idea. Um, so like I said, the first thing that I do is I crop four by five. That's kind of the ratio that I use when I edit. So I'm gonna to go to this crop tool and it's already set on four by five, cause that's my, um, I tend to crop a lot in, in photos when I edit. Um, I know some people probably don't, but I just, so like what interests me in this photo and what I'm looking for is I love this kind of the water in the middle and then the mountains and then how the light and just kind of the, the contrast between the light and the shadows. So because I feel like I don't need this much sky necessarily or this much like shadow in, in, on the bottom half, I'm gonna actually crop down pretty, pretty hefty, maybe like this. And I'm gonna center the water because I like, I really like that water, use it as an anchor point. So I'm gonna do that and see that difference before it was like this. And now you really, when you crop out what you don't need, you kind of really draw attention to what I'm trying to bring out. So I can even go, I can even go a little bit more. I could probably even do this. So this is what I do like before I kind of get into anything else, but I like, and you just kind of feel the balance, like what, what feels right to you? What, what do you think um, you're happy with? Actually, I'm gonna, So the crazy thing about editing is there's so many things you can do. Um, so I, I like that, that feels good. So what I do with Snapseed is I, I'll adjust the photo to kind of the right maybe exposure, like um, different, kind of get the right balance before I bring it into the next app, which is Visco. So I think the brightness is fine. Like I don't, if I go too bright, I don't want it to be too exposed, but I am gonna, I'm gonna experiment with the shadows. So maybe I can bring a hint of those trees in the foreground. See how there's trees there? And then to balance that out, I might bring the highlights down. If you guys have any questions, uh, shoot them over. Maybe Joel, you can, if there's any questions pertaining to this. Sure. 
um, just shout him out because I can't like click on the actual chat. Dan, how do you flip from like the before and after? So you're making an ed I'm making an adjustment. How do you, is there a problem? Yeah. Um, so you just hold down on the photo. So I'm just literally pressing down. So it'll, it'll always reference the first photo, but then it'll go, then when you take your thumb off or your finger off, it'll get to the, so see how you kind of notice like those trees in the foreground now, now that you're up in the shadows, like that's kind of interesting to me. It adds another element to the photo. So I'm going to export this to my camera roll. Again, this is where we started. And then this is kind of the crop and kind of the, uh, the general outside. Then I'll open Visco and there's our photo. But see how much larger the mountains are compared to the original below it and how that just becomes a bit more kind of present. So now I bring it to Visco, I go to edit. So this is what I'm talking about. So Visco, there's a lot of filters built in as you can see as I'm scrolling through here. And typically I don't have one filter that I go to. I'll usually just, you know, kind of click and like, I don't really edit the one photo or all the photos the same way. Um, but I do have, so as you can see, some of these filters are pretty extreme. They'll really bring out certain colors and um, exposure and kind of the tone. So, and with Visco, if you hold down on your photo as well, it'll, you can see the before and after. But the before is, is, the, is the photo that you imported. So it's not our original photo before it was cropped. It's gonna be the photo that we imported. So like this. Um, and you can use the filters at full, full strength, which is the 12, but I rarely do that. I usually just kind of go in a certain direction. So I'm gonna do that about halfway. Um, another thing that I like to do, so these are all kind of similar tools that were in Snapseed. So you have exposure, contrast, you can crop in here too. Um, I typically like Snapseed because it actually exports the photo at the highest res or the original resolution. And then this go, you can still do it, but um, I just, that's kind of just how my, my workflow is. Uh, one thing that you can, another thing is kind of like my editing checklist, I, I guess I would say, is after I crop, pick the filter, um, I'll always kind of check the white balance. So the white balance is kind of like the temperature gauge. So if you wanted to make it warmer, you can really kind of bring out those warm tones or give it like a summery feel. Um, if you wanted it a bit cooler, it's just kind of, it just kind of changes like the energy and the mood a little bit of the photos. So I typically like, warmer photos especially if there's if there's like sunlight um i think it just is more inviting and i just kind of like the vibe more and then the tint is kind of it makes it more yellow if you go to this way or green and then it, you kind of add like a purple tone but you know you can really it's really your preference there's no right way or wrong way to edit a photo um so hey, man, I, I, I'm going to jump and ask you. So we had a question yeah. from Natalie who was like, you know, you've done, you've done a few edits now in Snapseed. You've taken it out, put it into Visco. Now, you know, iPhone itself has some editing options to brightness and this and that. But the reason you love Snapseed and Visco is because there's so much more control or so much more ability. To yeah, I mean, I think... I think, you know, I, I started Snapseed and Visco, like this was probably seven years ago. And I think it's just become my workflow. There are other options. I mean, you can definitely edit these photos like in the native camera app too with the, adjusting the exposure, um, contrast. These are all kind of general tools that are actually in the native app as well. I, I just haven't really explored that too much, to be honest. So I think this is just kind of what I like to do. Um, and, so yeah, you can definitely adjust the exposure, like all that stuff, the shadows, I think in, and even in Instagram within the app, and there's a, there's tons of other photo apps that you guys can use too. Like I know Lightroom has all of these, uh, or mobile Lightroom has all of these adjustments too. Um, so there's no, you don't have to use Snapseed necessarily. Um, that's just kind of my my preference. Okay, awesome. And, and one more question related to this exact photo. Maria is asking, how did you only, this might go back a few steps, but how did you lighten the trees without the mountain, uh, without the mountains becoming too bright? So you're able in those apps to kind of adjust certain sections, right? As you already chatted about. Yeah, so 
how to answer that question specifically because the original photo like you can barely like they were completely in the shadows um i just suggested the shadows and you can actually do that in this app too so there's if you click on uh, tone you have the highlights so if you the highlights control like the brightest parts of the photo see how the sky is getting darker mm -hmm. is the original and then the shadows will bring up anything that's dark. Um, so as you can see here, and that's how you kind of just adjust the dark parts or just adjust the light parts. Um, this is a really good way to kind of even out the lighting or if, you, if, if there's a photo that has a lot of contrast, um, I'll usually bring down the highlights a little bit and then bring up the shadows. So yeah, see how, it, but see like when it, when it gets to like this point, I, I almost feel like it's it's kind of faded and it feels a little, like it's not really dark, dark anymore. It's kind of like a, a gray. And I feel like you lose a little bit of that, that heaviness or that oomph that has a nice contrast. So you just, you know, it, it's really up to you. I've seen plenty of different styles that, you know, kind of bring the shadows up and kind of have this faded, this faded look that that a lot of us have seen on Instagram, I'm sure, especially in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> or certain <laughs> certain regions. Um, but I I, tech, I prefer just maybe just a little bit and then to have to have those blacks still somewhat somewhat black too. But I'll just do this just for for today's sake. So this is our before before the filter and these adjustments, and then this is the after. See how it just kind of has like a different a different mood to it. Um, the other tool that I talk about a lot in the workshop is if you scroll all the way to the end of Visco, there's this HSL tool. And this is where you can really play with the colors of the photo. So as you can see on the bottom, there's it divides it into like color ranges. So you have your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. Um, if you're not sure what is going to adjust what, the, the best way is just to experiment and trial and error. Like if you're like, I don't know which parts of this are yellow, like you can literally just click on the yellow and then desaturate it. And look, it, it'll, it'll take out all the yellows in that photo. So that, that lets me know, okay, the yellows are just in this portion here. So if I wanted to adjust that or say enhance that and make it, make it pop more, I would up in the saturation. So the, the, let me explain this actually too. So the hue, HSL is hue saturation. And I think luminance is the technical term, but this code's called lightness. So if you, if you select a color, let's, let's, do, let's do the blues. The sky is blue. So as you can see, if I can desaturate it like that. So the saturation is just the intensity of the color. The lightness is kind of like how bright or how dark you want it. So if I wanted to bring down the sky, see how the sky becomes more heavier because the blues are. And then the hue is kind of the range within the blues. So if you wanted it, so it'll kind of go to like more turquoise if you kind of bring it all the way, or it, let's just, or it'll become kind of more purple. You see that. So that's really, really, I use this a lot. I use this tool probably, um, one of the most tools, uh, most reliant tools that I use. Um, yeah, that sounds that seems very powerful. Yeah, it's it's great, especially if if the photo itself is already kind of um, color blocked in a certain way, or like certain colors are very divided, and it it is more of a a, a simple uh, composition. You can really really get away with like there is um, like Apple, for example, had these new billboards, and they're super super like. They almost look like works of art because they're like they're super saturated. All the colors are kind of wild. Like I think we've all seen those like really purples, yellows, and I think sorry, um, like those are all kind of edited probably with this a lot. Like HSL, you just like make those super bright. Um, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make this a little more turquoise, just even barely. But and as you as you as you use these tools more, you're gonna get more comfortable. You're gonna you're gonna kind of like know what to do, or, or, or you're just gonna gravitate towards certain ways. And you know, for me, this has been like one of like eight years of of using these tools. So I can kind of if if I'm going too fast, definitely tell me to slow down. Uh, I'm gonna bring that on you, Joel. <laughs> you know, I'll moderate. I think you're going at a good. 
good pace right now and, and really explaining all of the tools and, and why you're using them. So, yeah, so we, I've adjusted the blues to how I like it. Um, now the next thing is there's a light on the mountain. So if you, now I'm, now I'm on the, I click on the orange color and see how, so to me there's, I mean, you can see that there's a lot of orange in the light too, but if you really wanted to adjust the orange, say you're good with that intensity, like I'm, I'm pretty good with that intensity, but you can adjust the, the hue. So if you wanted it to be a bit more, let's say kind of like pinkish or reddish, you would bring the orange hue to this side. If you want it to be more yellow, you would bring it to this side. Um, so I tend to kind of do, you know, we all kind of have our, our certain ways that we like photos and this is just kind of mine. So the yellow, see how the, see how the yellow became much more like orange and reddish on, on those mountain peaks? Like that's where the yellow color is right there. Yeah, right in the right in the top there on the on the yeah, peaks. right right on the, the upper left hand peaks right there. You can really see. So if you're bringing the yellows down, it really kind of dulls it out and really darkens it. And then I can do this too. So this is kind of these are all the tools that I play with. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there. Um, another thing, you've been using these apps for like you said seven or eight years. Um, there's a question here from Glorianne, and she's she's asking. Do you try to follow a specific color palette? Because when you get into the HSL and you get into some of these different things that you're using to grade the photos, you know, if people take a step back or they look at your Instagram account in a tile form, like there's definitely a feeling or a sensation that carries across all of the images. Is it kind of just like a personal style? It looks good in your mind and that's yeah, brought, or has do you have like, okay, my shadows are a little bit tinted blue or, or do you have some rules in your mind to keep it a certain style? Um, I actually don't have any rules that I keep in mind. I think, um, yeah, I think she's right in terms of like, there are like how I kind of adjusted these colors just now in this photo, this is kind of how I would do it um, for myself. So like the blues, I would make maybe slightly more turquoise, um, the yellows and oranges, maybe slightly more red or pink. Um, these are all kind of things that I tend to do, but it, it really just comes down to the photo itself and getting to a place where I feel like I'm happy with. Um, so that's really kind of my my approach to editing and my approach to each photo. Like I don't, I don't really paste, like I wouldn't paste like all these same edits on like a different photo unless it was maybe you know part of like the set or maybe shot like in the same like in the same way or different alternate shots of this this same kind of landscape um just to save time but i really like to approach each photo like on its own and you know everyone's different like some people can just do like batch editing where you can kind of paste and in visco you can actually paste um and edit to a group of photos too which is really cool very um, cool there's a lot of other tools in here um, that I don't use, but if like what you were saying, Joel, if you wanted to change the color of like the shadows, you can actually do that in here too. So there's a split tone um, tool. And if you go to shadows tint, which is on, I can pick, you can pick different colors and see how it changes the tones and the shadows. Um, I typically don't do this. I like, I like my shadows kind of more just desaturated and, and black or, or kind of gray. But, um, you know, it's really, this is due to just other possibilities. And then you have the opposite. So instead of the shadows, you can use the highlights. Um, so see how the sky became, has that pinkish tint now and really kind of takes the photo to a different place. Um, but I usually don't use those. Um, you know, some people can add, if you want to add more of a feeling or like kind of a filmy or film kind of look, you can add grain to the photo. There's all, there's all kinds of different, or you can fade it. It's just kind of like almost, to me, it's almost like adjusting the shadows a little bit. It makes your shadows um, grayer or not as, like not as heavy. Um, but yeah, so I think this is a good, this is a good place. I'm gonna export this. And that's pretty much like, where is it? That's pretty much like a big part of how I would approach and edit a photo. Um, 
So let's see. There we go. Very, very, yeah. So you can see this is the before, and then this is like the after. Wow. Now, do you? So there was another question here. Um, Bryn Hansen is asking, um, you know, if you're working with with clients or you know, this is a, a paid job. Are you, you're sometimes not just using these apps for social use. You're also kind of, I think I had a discussion with you earlier today. You said that you also do some fine tuning sometimes for, for not just your mobile photos using these apps as well, because they are quite powerful, right? Yeah. So um, I think what we talked about earlier, Joel, is like, if, if I'm, shooting for my camera um, and I'm editing, like context is important, I think, with how you edit and where you're gonna be using the photo. So if it's gonna be for like my desktop or a website or like say a portfolio site, I would definitely maybe edit a little differently. Um, and you need, you need to see it in, in its context. So even if I edit, say this photo for a desktop, I would edit it differently for Instagram because Instagram is a smaller format. And when you see it on your phone, you're just kind of seeing like a thumbnail size. So I typically will try to make it, give it a little bit more, um, maybe like pop or like where you can really tell what the photo is when you see it at a small size. So I edit based, kind of based on, I mean, I'll still do similar adjustments with like the colors and things like that, but always edit for like whatever the context you're gonna be using the photo for. Okay. And when you, you still have, you've made prints and whatnot using, there was another question being asked where you, you know, with Visco, with Snapseed, do you get to a certain point where you think that the photo is starting to lose quality or um, when you use these apps, you're still finding the quality, not just for social, but you could also make some prints of these images? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for iPhone photos, I you can still definitely make prints. I wouldn't go too large. I mean, I know you see them on billboards uh, with Apple, but I think to the question or to whoever asked the question, yes, I think you do lose a little bit of quality the more that you, like say you bring them back and forth between different apps and you export them multiple times, you are gonna see probably a loss in quality. Um, I think for social, it's okay, to be honest. Um, I've, I've done that, like I sometimes I'll, I'll bring it in Visco twice. Um, and then sometimes I'll, you know, I've, I've made prints based off iPhone photos that I've edited on my phone as well. And I think they turn out fine too. I, I wouldn't go larger than maybe like 11 by 14 or eight by 10, just to ensure kind of like good quality. Um, and, but I definitely wouldn't go like 20 by 30 or 30 by 40 with, with an iPhone photo. Sweet, that, that question was from Johan. So thank you very much Johan for asking. Cool. Should we do, um, should we do another one? Yeah, let's do another one. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. Oh, I want to see that. Okay. So I particularly love this photo. That's why I picked it. Um, I have no idea where this is, but this, I love kind of the composition of this photo, like how your eye kind of kind of draws and kind of follows like the slopes of the hills, but also the colors and the light. The light is really interesting to me. There's obviously like some light kind of coming through the clouds. Um, I actually don't think I need to really do too much, but I just want to edit this for fun and just see, see how this goes. So um, this photo is by Simon underscore E. I'll just link his Instagram account in the yeah, chat. Yeah, Simon, this is an awesome photo, man. Thanks for sending this in. Um, so again, I'll, yeah, so this is the one thing, like if I, I crop four by five, but as you can see, you really have to kind of decide because you're going to lose, you know, like a, a decent portion of the photo um, where you really want to focus on. So for me, I mean, this is going to be a tough one, but I think I want to see more color than maybe like what's, what's kind of in the crop right now. So I'm gonna include, and I like this little texture on the, the left side, so I'm gonna do this. And you can even really focus too if you wanted to like say this to this, but anyways, um, I'm gonna do this. 
because I just love those colors and I like that that texture of the rock on the left side. Um, I'm gonna adjust. The other thing cool, cool about editing is you can really just explore. Like I, I probably spent hours and hours on these apps just playing around and, and doing trial and error. And you know, I don't know if most of you guys know, but I'm I'm pretty much self-taught. Um, I, I really didn't take any photo classes or or go to school for photography. Um, I am a designer, so I do have like a, somewhat of a background in in visual, I guess, or creative field. But um, I really just learned by by kind of trial and error, trying different things. So see how you can kind of. Yeah, this photo is great. Um, this would make an awesome print, by the way, Simon. Uh, I think I'm pretty good. I really, I'm just gonna export this now. I think it's, a, I, I like the exposure. I think it's, a, so I'm gonna bring well, this, up. this This photo, um, Dan, is on the Pamir Highway. I just kind of like found it. It's one of uh, Simone's, I think his, his Instagram account is Simon, but it's his name might be Simone. It's pronounced, it's spelled a little bit differently. And this is in Tajikistan. Wait, where? <laughs> uh, this photo is on this is a is a highway connecting Kyrgyzstan and, and Tajikistan, oh, wow. which is north of Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, and that, there's a series on his account that shows different parts of, of this highway. It's very beautiful. That's rad. Yeah, this is this is really beautiful. I mean, you can really like again. It's really preference. Um, I really I still like the AU five. Like that's kind of my probably my one of my favorite filters that I'll, I'll always check. But as you can see, a really good photo usually will look good across a lot of different filters that you might pick. So all of these really kind of work in terms of, it's really just preference, but I'm just gonna, let's just select one. So this is the before and then this is the after. Yeah, there's just a lot going on that's really interesting. I think the texture is, I think the light, the, the kind of layers that's created with, with the, with the mountains, um, and it just looks—it just looks like a place that you know I've never seen before. Um, so I think I'm gonna do this. Uh, let's see. Let's play with color on this one a little bit. So I'm gonna go to HSL. Oh yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna intensify the reds a little bit, and maybe even go to the pink the pink hue. Hey Dan, um, Yoha is asking why do you always crop five by five by four or four by five? Is there is there a reason behind that? Um, it's really for me. It's just like a good. That's my favorite ratio to crop for uh, social media. So like for Instagram, I think like instead of doing like a square or instead of doing, I, I find other ratios like say like two by three or three by four, um, they feel a little too too narrow for me. And I think on Instagram in particular, if you crop a four by five and post it vertically, I think it, it takes like a decent chunk of the screen. And I like, I like how that feels. Um, again, this is just how I would do it for Instagram. If I were maybe doing it for like a website or a desktop, I could easily do like two by three or three by four. Cause I do think that with this particular photo, like everything that was in the frame or the original frame, like I would, I would be cool with, like, I think that's, I'm just doing it how I would probably do it for Instagram uh, right now. But I, I just like that ratio for, for social, that, that's mainly why. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so see how, so I'm just suggesting the yellow. So there's like all, it's really, there's a lot of yellows, oranges and reds in this photo. Um, and I'm just kind of adjusting them. So this is the before, I'm just kind of bringing them out a little bit and really, really making that the focus of what uh, this photo is about like the textures and the colors. Um, so then I'm going to go to again like the white balance just to see. So if you go cooler, you really kind of you kind of feel some more eerie. Um, if you go warmer, I mean it's really there's just a lot of good things going on with this photo. You can make it more yellow. I'm going to go a little bit more purple side. Put some tint. And there's another, um, I'll explain a couple of these other ones. So sharpening is exactly what it sounds like. You can kind of try to make, 
don't know if you can tell on the screen, but it gets a little bit more texture uh, and sharpens it a little bit, uh, almost like sort of, I don't think it pixelizes it, but it, and then clarity gives it, it really kind of gives it that grit if you wanted to give like texture to it. The opposite of like giving it clarity would be, you know, it would like smoothen it out. So I typically don't use these too much unless a photo, I feel like a photo might need one of these things, but it's good to know that this is available. Um, and then I really play with contrast. I'm gonna export that. This makes me wanna to go to uh, no, I think it would be an incredible place to visit. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is kind of the kind of the, the crop. And then this is where we landed, or this is where I landed on the edit. So this is the before, and then this is the after. Wow. So yeah, I mean, I the photo itself is already great. Um, and just kind of brought out some of those colors. Uh, that's it, that's all. That's all I did. Um, any questions that we should Yeah, I, I, there's a couple more questions that we can go through, but I just want to reiterate that your workshop, The Storyteller's Guide to Taking Better iPhone Photos, is, on, uh, is available for early access right now, everyone who's watching. And the price is going to jump to its to full on Wednesday. So this is the last two days to jump in on, on um, Dan Tom's newest workshop. And he goes, much more in depth than what we're doing right now. And it's also incredibly powerful and educational to see how he's actually taking his iPhone into the wild, you know, and actually taking those images and how he's changing the exposure in camera or like the photo that Dan just edited of this, you know, beautiful highway in, in the Middle East. Um, this photo was really great kind of almost to start. And sometimes you need to take a really great photo and the editing is much easier post-processing, which I'm sure Dan will agree. So in the workshop, it's very beautiful, very amazing to see how Dan is approaching his photography because he's in, a, you, you know, you just have to take a look at his portfolio to realize uh, the gift that he has at creating visually compelling images and, and telling stories. And this workshop really shows you how he's in the wild taking those photos. <laughs> and uh, sweet, I can ask you a couple more questions then maybe yeah, to, the, to, the, to the image that you just edited. Um, actually, this is a little bit maybe, so now that you've edited this photo, you're uh, a person on Instagram then that is, has a white border around all of your images. So how are you taking this edited image? What are you using to make the white border? Oh yeah, uh, I can walk you through that. So there's another app, there's a separate app that I use just to add the border. And it's I use InShot, which is this middle this middle icon. So if you open InShot, you can actually add borders to videos or or photos, or you can collage them. Um, so I usually just go into the photo, and then let's bring this in. So because we we cropped it four by five, when you click on if you click on the canvas, which is the first icon on the bottom left you can select which ratio you want uh, for your photo. So if you do four by five, and you can also do it the other way too, um, where you can make it um, landscape. But if I were posting this, I like to post it large. So I always keep my ratio like vertical. Um, and then the zoom is where you add the border. So. As you can see, there's this little toggle button. So if you go to negative, it'll add the border and you can make it as small as you want, or you can actually zoom the, zoom the photo in. Um, I typically use anywhere from like a 12 to a, to a 16, um, but I might do it a little bit less because it's, it's a landscape photo and I don't want it to be too small. Um, so that's kind of what I would do. And then you just, put, click the check mark and then in the upper right hand corner there's that little export icon and then you get all these really cool fun random ads <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh. there's your image so this was the original or kind of the original crop edited 
and then ready for Instagram. Awesome. Um, so Simone has a question here. Um, you know, some people are using a third party app as the camera in their iPhone. Are you, you're just using the standard camera app yep. that comes with the iPhone, correct? Yes. Um, I usually just shoot on the camera because it's just a really quick, you know, swipe up. So like from the lock screen, I can just click on that, that icon on the right and it's, it's, it's there. Um, that's why I like it. I know that there's apps that allow you to shoot in the raw and I actually haven't tried that out too much, but I imagine that it's probably, it's probably great because it allows you more flexibility because the quality in, in editing in post, especially because editing, um, editing a raw image is much, it, it retains more information. So you can actually adjust uh, the exposure and even the highlights uh, better than if, than probably from the native, uh, just a regular camera. And in the native camera app, Dan, are you using um, like the HDR feature? Is it turned on or are you turning that feature off? I like typically don't use the HDR. Um, I not a huge fan of how it processes the photos sometimes. Sometimes it's okay, but for the most part, I just keep it off because I there's there's times when I don't like um, what what it kind of gives you. Okay, good to know. Um, some other oh one more question here before you, I think we could probably quickly get in one more photo potentially. Uh, do you also do you ever shoot with like attach attach lenses or anything to the to the iPhone or are you just using the standard lens? I'm just using the standard lens. Um, I know Moment has a lot of great you know attachments and and lenses you guys can use, um, but I I'm just using the camera by itself and kind of the like the double zoom feature or the zoom on the native camera. Everything's just native camera for me. Awesome. Do you think you can get one more in, uh, Dan? Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, I can. Let's see. And I'm trying my best to, if if I think uh, Dan's busy here editing, I'll, I'll, I'm answering some of your questions too in the Q&A so you can see the type to answer as well. So I'm going to edit this one. Um, I think his name is Pelu. He, he DM me. So Pelu, I don't know if you're watching, but thanks for sending this in. Um, this is actually from Iceland. I already asked him where this is from. So again, to me, let's see. We're going to do my the regular four by five uh, crop here. The other, the other cool thing is after, I mean, sometimes I'll even change the orientation in a photo by cropping it if I feel like I like that better. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep it this way. Uh, and are you comfortable doing that with uh, the, the quality of an iPhone for yeah. some purposes? Yeah, you can. Um, I've done it. I've done it multiple times uh, with, with iPhone photos, too. So if you are afraid that you might have shot it in the wrong orientation, you can still, I think the photo is still usable if you wanted to actually crop after the fact and change the orientation. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna go to my tune image. So the problem, I like, I like how there's different layers and how it, you know there's kind of a leading lines draws your eye to the center on this one. But also just just a sense of place. I feel like it's kind of has an adventure vibe, and looks like there's a person or two on the, the cliff. So I'm gonna. What I like to do too is when I shoot in my phone, I'll I'll tend to underexpose a little bit because it's easier to bring up the exposure in post, um, and you won't miss out on like certain highlights if you overexpose a shot when you take it. Um, like say you shot it. Say this was the original shot or say this was the original shot. There's a lot of information that's in those bright areas that's that's lost and that you can't get back. Whereas if you shoot it underexposed like this, you can always, it's easier to brighten it than it is to like try to get information from overexposed areas or, or, or highlights. Um, but this exposure looks pretty good to me actually. Let's just export this. Into this 
Dan, is there a reason that you prefer, like, do you ever take the photo into Lightroom or is it just like a convenience thing? These apps are powerful enough, do you, do you not think, for the mobile photography? Yeah, I think I think it just would take it's just too many steps, I think, to, to bring an iPhone photo into Lightroom or, or onto your desktop. There's nothing wrong with that, but this, this for me, you can do everything on the fly. So if I were traveling and say you, you take a bunch of photos with your phone, you can I can edit like on the car ride back or on the plane ride home. Like these are all kind of, it just keeps things really simple and it saves you time too. Sweet, thank you. That was Maria who asked. Thank you, Maria. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually play with, um, use this filter. Let me adjust the white balance. Typically, if there's a lot of shadows in a photo, the shadows are gonna be cooler in terms of the temperature. So if, if that's the case, what I like to do is to counterbalance the coolness of shadows. Um, I'll like warm it up a little bit. So I'm adjusting the warmth a little bit. So this is the original, and then this is the, the edited version or the, so what we have so far. And as you can see, like the exposure got a little brighter and the sky, you lose a little bit of that sky. So what I like to do is I'll go to the HSL and cause I know that part is blue. See if I bring the blues down, I get some of that sky back. So that's something that I like to do. So if you lose a certain area cause you're, you're changing the exposure, see if you can isolate it in a way where you can just adjust that portion of the photo. So I can, I can also, if you don't like the sky, you can just bring it out too. But I'm gonna to try to retain some of that sky, maybe add some saturation and then change the tone, add a little bit more turquoise. And then there's a lot of yellows. So see how the yellows really, and I'm gonna make the yellows a little warmer as well too. And then bring it, bring it down a little bit. And then the green, see, I can really see how the, where the people are standing, they really kind of, this is just showing you guys what you guys can do with photos, with adjusting. This tool is really powerful. Um, and I can even make it brighter or darker too. So I like, I like where it is right here. So this was the original crop that we brought into Visco. And then this is kind of the, Actually, the blues might be a little too dark. And I'm gonna save this to my camera roll. Dan, are you using a, a paid version of Visco to, to have more availability to more of the filters or are you using the free version? That's a great question. Um, I think, I don't know if HSL is included in the free version of Visco. Um, I'm not sure. I've, I've been using this for a while, so I'm not sure if it's included or not. Um, but I will say if you can't use Visco for HSL, you can download um, Lightroom Mobile. And I know that they have a tool just like HSL um, where you can adjust you can isolate the colors and adjust the tones and the hues and everything too. Awesome. So let's see. Okay, so this is our original. This is our exported. So see how the, yeah, it's just a lot, a little bit warmer. You see, you kind of notice the, the yellows and the greens a little bit more. And then, oops. I'll even, so this is what I mean when I like the four by five. I think it's a nice, so you go to the canvas, go to four by five, zoom. So now you have this exported image, you've put your border on the, uh, on the image, Dan. Um, is there anything, you know, when you, when you put the photo into Instagram, are you adjusting any like of the Lux filters or brightness or anything within the Instagram, L uh, Instagram app itself? No, I, I never use any of those filters in, in Instagram. Um, okay. What sometimes I'll do is because the border does, might make it, you know, look a little different or it might, um, if I'm like really, really picky about something, I'll bring it back into Snapseed with the border just to take one last look and then make any last minute adjustments there. 
you could do this in Visco too. Um, so like say I wanted to maybe brighten it a little bit more and then add some contrast. Um, so if you click on that upper right hand kind of box with the line through it, um, that'll show you the before and after uh, while you're in the tool editing. Um, so I don't think I need, but yeah, I think I need. So maybe I might do a little bit brighter. Yeah. These just last minute tweaks. And then I'll just export that and then I'll post it to Instagram. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so thank you so much, Dan, for, for editing these last three photos. I'll just say one more time, your workshop, um, the Storyteller's Guide to Taking Better iPhone Photos is available at the early access price of $75. You can check that out at our website, wildest.co. It uh, changes to full price on Wednesday. So you, if you've watched this, you've got two more days to access this. Um, Dan, is there anything else that you would like to say um, to, to any of the people watching, any students? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, thank you to everyone who tuned in today, um, who has already purchased the workshop. Um, really appreciate the support. Um, I hope that you guys got something from tonight and from the workshop if you guys purchased it. But also, I think um, I get more into depth with editing in the workshop. I, I did kind of... Um, I did show you the majority of what I do use in editing, but there is a bit more in the workshop if you guys are curious about that as well. Sweet. Yeah, there's, I think there is quite a bit more. And like I said, when I was talking about earlier, it's very cool. You know, editing is, is a big portion of the photos you see, but it's so important to, to the process. Like if you're putting a story together with a set of images, like what am I shooting? How do I want to tell this story? And I think you really dive much deeper into that in your workshop. Yeah, we get into like how to kind of curate photos, um, how to select photos to choose for like a story that you might want to tell or like summarize a trip that you might go on. Um, but it's really a bit more in depth of just my kind of thinking and approach to not just editing, but shooting and um, storytelling. And hopefully uh, you guys will tune in. Um, I think I think it's well worth it. Excellent. Sweet. Well, Dan, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, we're, we're beyond grateful to, to have you here and to, we're so stoked to have you as our newest instructor. Everyone who joined, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you, yeah, you. Uh, go away learning something from Dan this evening. And if you want to watch it, uh, if there's something that happened, it's going to be recorded and published on our YouTube channel, uh, uh, Wildest on YouTube. Yeah, thank you, Joel, for uh, for hosting. I know it's not easy, so appreciate that. Totally, it's uh, really great to to get to know you over the last uh, few weeks, Dan, and um, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Take care. Peace. Bye.